هلا بنبلش لان الوقت محسوب علينا ما نموت شيء تمام دكتور نبلش طبعا نروح للدكتور محمد معروف موجود طلع نغادر ال اوكي يعني خلينا نبلش طبعا عنوان المحاضره اليوم مثل ما تشوفون اعتقد يعني الشاشه ظاهره عندكم يعني دكتور ظاهره So we will uh, have um, uh, a superficial and broad knowledge about the, a superficial actually, uh, about the bacterial skin infections. Uh, the most common conditions uh, caused by bacteria. Uh, that will encounter you, uh, whether you are dermatologists or uh, not dermatologists. Okay. So uh, the first condition is impetigo. So it's a very common, contagious, superficial skin infection produced either by Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus uh, pyogenes, or both of them. So we have two clinical we have two clinical presentations, either bolus or non bolus. Okay. Uh, Dr. 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 اي دكتور لما تطلع من السلايد شير ترجع تقلب لازم دكتور تعمل انتاير سكرين مو شير تعمل فقط للابلكيشن ايش اسوي؟ البرزنتيشن لازم تعمله دكتور انتاير سكرين لما تطلع البرزنتيشن من جوجل ميت يعني تقفل هذا البرزنتيشن تعمل تعمل ترجع تعمل برزنتيشن على شكل انتاير سكرين فول سكرين دكتور ظاهرة بس لازم ما تعمل سلايد شير يعني تخليها هالشكل وتقلب لما تعمل سلايد شير قصدك سلايد سلايد شو ولا سلايد شير؟ سلايد شو؟ اي دكتور سلايد شو اي هو ذا اذا سلايد شير يعني ما راح يشوف ما راح تشوفون شيء اوكي يعني هسه ظاهرة عندكم ولا ما ظاهرة؟ اي دكتور هسه ظاهرة وعادي تقلب اوكي سو امبتايجو اجين از ا كومن كونتيجيوس مينز انفكشوس Uh, superficial skin infection caused by caused by bacteria, either streptococci, staphylococci, or both of them. Mixed infection, yeah. We have two clinical, different clinical presentations, either bolus or non bolus okay? But in both, uh, the condition starts as a vesicle or a bulla with a very thin roof, okay? Within the stratum corneum. Actually, uh, recently, Staphylococcus aureus is none now, none to be the primary pathogen in both bullus and non bullus. Gabal, Chani Wagulun, Al Bullus, who was Staphylococcus, well, non bullus, who was Streptococcus, Asala. Both of them, Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. So um, any person could be affected, but children are much more affected than adults. And it spreads by close physical contact. It's contagious, infectious. So uh, it might or might arise or occur after a minor skin injury or breach. Okay. But uh, in many cases, it might develop on apparently unimpaired skin. Of course, epitigo is a self-limiting condition, but complications can occur, like glomerulonephritis, osteomyelitis, arthritis, pneumonia. Complications can occur in any mild or self-limiting condition. So glomerulonephritis 
may follow streptococcal infection. Okay, and it is actually caused by certain strains of streptococcus pyogenes. But again, this is rare. Again, impetigo is a very self-limiting condition that sometimes requires no treatment, but complications can occur, like glomerulonephritis, especially in streptococcal infection, uh, osteomyelitis, arthritis, pneumonia. Okay. So the first clinical presentation or type is bullous impetigo, okay, which is caused by the epidermolytic toxin produced by Staphylococcus aureus. Okay. So this toxin causes cleavage or lysis in the statum corneum. Okay. Again, it is more common in children, as I said, than adults. Okay. Any area could be affected, but the face near the nose and mouth is more commonly affected. The area, the perinasal and perioral areas are more commonly affected. Limbs, trunks, any area could be affected, but more on the face. Okay, so, and we, we might have, sorry, single lesion or multiple lesions. This is uh, a skin biopsy, a piece of skin uh, seen under the microscope, stained with the uh, hematoxylin eosin, showing the uh, epidermolysis, the, the subcorneal vesicle or bulla, the subcorneal vesicle or bulla. This is bulla sympatigo. So in bullous impetigo, the center of the thin roofed vesicle collapses. Okay. But the peripheral rim, the ring of the bulla, remains intact and remains containing fluid. With time, I mean hours, uh, this center becomes replaced with a crust formed from a dried serum. The crust is honey colored or yellowish colored or orange colored. Okay. If removed, it will leave uh, a moist, bright red area that again oozes serum. Again, with time, hours and days. Okay, and in most cases, the fluid filled rim becomes replaced with a scaling border. And it might look like tinea or ringworm infection. This is a, a very early presentation of bullous epitago. Very early lesions. Okay, you can see the intact bully. Intact vesicles or bullet containing yellowish fluid, and some of them have ruptured. You can see this bulla, this particular bulla, uh, the center has ruptured, okay, leaving, leaving a moist, bright red area. And you can see the peripheral scaly rim around the center. This is an early presentation. Usually, uh, presentation is more delayed, in fact. This is uh, a more or less late presentation. We can see nobly. They have disappeared. They have collapsed. Okay. You can see we have a central area and a peripheral area. You can see. This is a very typical presentation. Um, when I mean typical, uh, I mean you don't you, you don't you don't see it. Look, uh, this is biology. We are humans. Um, you can't see the same lesion every time or in every person. So when I, when I say typical presentation, it means there are atypical presentations. Okay. 
So this is a typical representation, but you, you don't see it all the time. But typically, this is bullus and bedaigo. Okay? Late presentation, which is most common, Taba. Again, this is a late presentation. Okay. Bulla sympatago. The bulla or vesicle has ruptured, leaving a denuded or moist or bare red area that oozes serum, which then dries, leaving uh, a honey colored crust. Don't know what laser. Yellowish, orange. And the Makhu crust, but uh, erosion, you can see the central area, which collapses first, and you can see the scaly rim. It resembles tinea, but this is not tinea, this is erosion. Okay, erosion is a secondary lesion. Okay, it's a secondary, pro it's, it's a secondary skin lesion. The primary lesion here, is a bulla or vesicle. So the very thin vesicle or bulla disappeared, leaving an erosion, which is usually, you know, covered with the crust. But in this photo, we have no crust. Okay, again, erosion, peripheral scale. Any area could be affected. In case of the petigo. Yeah. Scaly rim. Okay. The number loss. Okay. Again, originates from a small vesicle or bulla or pustule. Okay. That ruptures, leaving a red moist area or base. Again, this base oozes serum which dries, forming a firmly adherent yellowish or honey-colored crust. Again, all areas could be affected, but the perinasal and perioral areas are more commonly affected. There is no scarring after healing. In all cases of lymphatica, because the cleavage, because the uh, level of the bulla formation is in the stratum corneum. Very superficial. Okay. So a pure culture of group A beta hemolytic streptococci may be isolated, may be sometimes isolated from early lesions. But in most cases, in the majority of patients, the area becomes quickly contaminated, contaminated with the staphylococci, little magalit, qabal, al asas, al bullas, who staphylococcal and pitaigo, al both types. Of course, regional lymphadenopathy is more common in numbolus than bolus. Okay. And we have the anti streptolysine or titer, which might be raised, but not into a significant level. But the anti deoxyribonuclease B increases um, in significant levels, especially in the tryptococcal impetigo. Actually, we don't perform these tests because um, it's not necessary. It's a self-limiting condition. Uh, complications can occur, but in very, very rarely, very rarely. Okay. We don't need biopsy. Diagnosis is a clinical. non bullous in Patago, we have no, we don't have the typical representation of the bullous, a central uh, depression with peripheral rim of a scale, only a very thin roofed bulla that have ruptured, leaving a moist red area, which is then covered with a firmly adherent 
yellowish crust. And below sympatigo. This is the most commonly affected area. And this age group is more commonly affected. Children. And bullets and pitaigo. Because both are caused by the same agent and both will be treated the same. So, but, you know, uh, we follow the books. Non bullets and pitaigo. Again. Any area could be affected. We don't see the building. They rupture very easily, leaving a moist area covered with a crust. Prevention. If you get a minor skin trauma, like abrasion or mosquito sting, you can use mupirocin ointment or fusidic acid ointment or cream to prevent super added infection or, or to prevent the proliferation of, of Staphylococcus aureus because it's a normal commensal of our skin. In cases of recurrent impetigo, in carriers, actually, uh, patients with recurrent impetigo should be evaluated for carriage of Staphylococcus aureus. Certain people, they carry Staphylococcus aureus on their skin, mostly at the nasal openings, perineum, axillary, and toe webs. So these people are more prone for recurrent attacks of impetigo. What do we do for them? We apply mucurosine ointment, okay, or fusidic acid ointment, or cream uh, on the nasal openings, perineum, axillary, and toe webs, twice or three times daily for five days. This will significantly reduce the Staphylococcus aureus population uh, on the skin of these individuals. Of course, treatment of impetigo simply topical plus minus systemic anti staphylococcal antibiotics. <laughs> topical, we have three mupirocin, ritapamulin, and fusidic acid. Systemic, we have amoxicillin, coamoxiclav, erythromycin, um, uh, cephalexin, okay, clindamycin, dicloxacillin. Okay, so topical plus minus systemic anti staphylococcal antibiotics. The other topic is cellulitis and erysipelas. Okay, these two infections are characterized by erythema, edema, and pain. We have redness, we have edema, we have pain. We have systemic upset, fever, malaise, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and we have increased white BC count. And both, especially erysipelas, are accompanied by lymphangitis and lymph adenopathy or lymphadenitis. Pathogens usually enter at sites of local trauma or abrasion or from a solite or through a solitic lesion or eczema or tinea pedis, for example. Okay. Cellulitis is deeper than erysipelas. So erysipelas involves the superficial layers of skin with prominent lymphatic involvement, while cellulitis extends more deeply into the subcutaneous fat. So, cellulitis is an infection of the dermis and subcutaneous fat. It's more deep, okay, and usually caused, of course, together with erysipelas by group A beta hemolytic streptococci or Staphylococcus aureus in adults. But in children younger than three years of age, Haemophilus influenzae type B is the main pathogen. So in adults, either staphylococci, yeah, staphylococcus, staph staphylococcus aureus, or group A streptococcus pyogenes. Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. The adults, 
build children less than three years of age hemophilia type B. I'm not the diagonal So in cellulitis, there is no clear distinction. This, the, the the line of demarcation is not that clear, not like erysipelas because it's more deep. So apparently, there is no clear, very clear, clear distinction. There is there is a distinction, but not that clear, not like in erysipelas. Okay, so there is less actually less clear distinction between infected and uh, and normal skin. And cellulitis could be recurrent, just like in Petaigo, in patients who had surgery or radiation therapy due to uh, abnormalities in the anatomy of the venous or lymphatic circulation. So cellulitis could be recurrent in these patients. Erysipelas is a superficial form of cellulitis with a prominent lymphatic involvement. condition deep, superficial. more superficial, with more lymphatic involvement. Cellulitis is more deep. That's it. The causative organism, other Staphylococcus aureus, or Group A, beta hemolytic streptococci in adults and in children less than three years of age, hemophilus influenza. So, in erysipelas, because it is superficial, the area of inflammation is raised above the surrounding skin. Okay, again, the area is red, hot, tender, painful, and raised. And there is a very distinct demarcation between the involved and normal skin. The cellulitis demarcation is less And the most commonly involved areas are the legs, face, and ears in erysipelas. OK. No speaking. OK. No speaking, especially during the winter. Okay, cellulitis of the nose, cellulitis, limbs. Okay, there is a line of demarcation, but we will see from the uh, upcoming photos less than erysipelas. Okay, cellulitis, erythema, edema. Pain, redness, heat, okay, swelling, okay. Cellulitis, it might resemble DVT, deep vein thrombosis. Okay, swelling, erythema, heat, pain, tenderness, okay. Perianal cellulitis. Cellulitis of the prepuce in uncircumcised penis. Okay. This is erysipelas. The redness is more, as you can see. The area, the affected area is raised. There is a very clear line of demarcation between the involved and uninvolved skin. Okay. Plus heat, of course, uh, pain, tenderness, erysipelas of the face, very common sight. Again, the ear is the second most common affected sight, erysipelas of the ear. Okay. This is what I mean by streaking. Actually, we can't see this picture all the time. Uh, 
but citrifying, we, we never see it in cellulitis. This is erysipelas. So you can see the very clear demarcation between the affected skin and normal skin, and there is a streaking. Lines, red, raised, painful, tender lines following the lymphatic drainage arising from the main lesion. This can be seen only in erysipelas, not in cellulitis. Lymphatic streaking. Okay. Only in erysipelas, not in cellulitis, because erysipelas is superficial, and lymphatics are superficial. This is streaking. Treatment, again, in uncomplicated cases, of course, oral antibiotics that work on the three causative agents, the three causative possible agents. In hospitalized patients with complicated conditions, okay, as you can read from the slide, we should shift from oral to intravenous antibiotics. So we have complicated and uncomplicated cases of cellulitis and erysipelas. The topical may feed are systemic, either oral or intravenous. طبعا النظام يختلف بالعراق عنه بالدول الغربية. The intravenous antibiotics are only and strictly given in a hospital setting in Western countries. Here you can buy intravenous antibiotics from the pharmacy even without prescription. In Western countries, you can't buy the simplest oral antibiotic. You can't buy an amoxicillin capsule. But here you can buy uh, the most expensive and rare uh, intravenous antibiotic without a prescription. Again, other measures, including elevation of the affected limb, Okay, uh, analgesics and cold compresses to relieve the pain. And of course, treating the predisposing condition or the precipitating condition like psoriasis, diabetes, stasis dermatitis, or any skin trauma or abrasion. Folliculitis. Okay. Folliculitis. Folliculitis. Folliculitis means simply an inflammation of the hair follicle, either due to microbial, physical, or chemical insult. Okay. So it may be superficial or deep. It's very common. And is a component of a variety of inflammatory skin conditions. So this table shows you the conditions initially manifesting in folliculitis. Folliculitis is very common. Iltihab bosailat al-shaar. Iltihab bosailat al-shaar. An inflammation of the hair follicle. Microbial, physical, chemical. طبعا احنا بس واحنا ناخذ يعني مثل ما اسلفت بدايه المحاضره الموضوع كلش كلش طويل يعني ايش قد ما نتعمق به ما راح يعني ما راح نخلص صراحه. But in this lecture we will discuss the most common conditions encountered by all doctors, whether dermatologists or non dermatologists. Okay. 
So the most common form of infectious folliculitis is the staphylococcal folliculitis. Menesma caused by staphylococcus aureus. Menesma. So what do we have here? One or multiple pustules arise on any part of the body. Only the hair bearing parts. Yani, the soul, the glands penis, the labia minora. Only hair bearing body areas. Whenever there is a hair follicle, you might get staphylococcal folliculitis. Okay. Usually there, is no, there, is, there are no fever or other systemic symptoms. But some other people see them, they see them, they see them, they see them, they see Because you have something on your skin, uh, you might feel some, not pain or tenderness, pruritus. Anyway, so it may occur after an injury, abrasion, such as shaving, okay? okay. Surgical wound. Draining abscess uh, or, or as a complication of occlusive topical steroid therapy. There might be some precipitating condition. Injury, shaving, steroid therapy, okay, wound, trauma. So the inflammation is superficial. It is only confined to the upper part of the hair follicle. It doesn't extend deep. So, clinically, it manifests as a painless, sometimes prolific or tender pustule that heals with or without, or without treatment, with no scarring. Okay? Painless, but sometimes prolific or tender pustule or pustules that heal With or without treatment, with no scarring. Dorophon tariff postulation. You know. uh, it's a cavity, circumscribed cavity uh, of 0.5 to 1 centimeter in diameter containing pus. This is staphylococcal folliculitis. Okay. You can see the tiny follicular postules. Okay. You can see this postule. The hair is originating from the postule. This, of course, postules are surrounded by uh, a tiny um, halo of erythema. Okay. This is after shaving. The photo in the lower part of the slide. Shaving after shaving the area. Abrasion, skin trauma, abrasion. Okay. This uh, male got. Staphylococcal folliculitis, numerous uh, postures affecting the pubic and upper thighs, pubic area and upper thighs. Okay. Of course, a treatment, I'm sorry, treatment, topical plus minus. Again, anti staphylococcal antibiotics. Akid. Aku fat condition adna asimha. I'm sorry, you can match you for the. No, but you found has the match you found. Then I'll kill my sarat half the. No, doctor, let me do a slide show. My insha'Allah. Okay, okay, uh, okay. No problem. No problem. Doctor, bil mouse, I have the little one. لا لا دكتور مو هاي لا تشوفوها مو هسه اوكي اوكي سودو فوليكولايتس باربي سودو نوت فوليكولايتس سودو فوليكولايتس واي ذيس كونديشن از از ات از يعني ميكانيكال مور ذان انفكشس ميكانيكال وي ويل ويل جيت ذات سو سودو فوليكولايتس باربي از ا فورم بودي رياكشن تو هير اوكي كلينيكلي ذير از ان انفلاميشن Again, less inflammation than with staphylococcus folliculitis. There is an inflammation, but it's a foreign body reaction to hair. 
usually occurs by any area could be affected. Face, axillary, pubic area, legs, but usually cheeks and more commonly the neck in males. Cheeks and neck in males. Not every male, only those who have genetically inclined tight, curly, spiral, mustache and beard hairs. Mostly black people. But we do have it. But mostly black people. Their hair genetically uh, is curled. Okay. So these people are more prone to develop this condition, which is called pseudo folliculitis barbie. So the hair, if cut below the surface, when you shave, especially uh, opposite the direction of the hair, the sharp tipped whisker, the whisker shunu, huwa sha'ar al-lahya aw al-sha'ar. Okay, the whisker huwa sha'ar al-lahya aw al-sha'ar. So, if you, if you, in, in case of, cases of close shaving, by razor, not by electric uh, razor, by razor, the mousse, especially opposite the direction of the hair. Okay. It, when it regrows, it might curve into the, might curve, might enter the skin or emerge and curve back to penetrate the skin. Okay. Because it is genetically curled, inclined. He is actually So a tender red papule, tender or operatic red papule or pustule occurs at the point of entry and remains until the hair is removed. أكيد قسم منكم عنده مرات يصير له حب يعني حباية يعني من من شوية يحاول يعني يفتحها يشوف شعراية مطوية طويلة داخلها شعراية هيجي ملفوفة وطويلة داخلها يعني ما تروح إذا ما تشيل شعراية okay but these patients will have many many of these postures or papules not not one So pseudo folliculitis barbie is a significant problem in armed services. Unlucky, if you are unlucky and you have genetically inclined hairs, you'll have this problem. Not everyone, not everyone. So it's a significant problem in armed forces and in professions in which individuals, and predisposed individuals, I mean, are required to shave regularly and very closely. Okay. So بس illustration توضيح اللي يصير الشعرة تدخل داخل الجلد إما تدخل داخل الجلد أو تطلع وترجع تدخل داخل الجلد شوفوا إما رأسا تفوت داخل الجلد أو تنمو 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 وترجع تدخل داخل الجلد of course after shaping this is the Adam's apple, this is the front of the neck of a male. You can see numerous papules and pustules. Okay. With with يعني, buried hair tufts. 
اكو فد شعرايات مدفونات ب يعني بال 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 بالبابيول بالبسطول نفسها تشوفون الشعره موجوده بينها واضحه كن نمت داخل الجلد اوكي ريد ملتيبل بابيولز with buried مدفونه بها buried pieces of hair inside them or tufts of hair inside the papules okay mostly on the cheek and much more commonly on the neck تكون حتى يعني اتجاه الشعر هو يعني مخربط okay and they are genetically inclined this is a problem in certain people طبعا we have preventive measures and and treating measures ما راح ادخل بيها زين آه مطلوبه منكم بس ما راح ادخل بيها لضيق الوقت صراحه هي تعليمات instructions plus آه يعني treatments بس عاده تعليمات هي to prevent and treat this condition which could be uh, nasty in some unlucky individuals I think we have the last subject, subject which is furuncles and carbuncles. Then the folliculitis, the staphylococcal, this condition uh, is also caused by staphylococcus aureus. The um, the staphylococcal folliculitis is superficial. This is deep. Okay. The furuncle, the habba, habaya, or or boil, also caused. Also called abscess or boil, more commonly boil actually, more commonly boil, is a walled off collection of pus that is painful, firm, or fluctuant, originating from a single infected hair follicle. The furuncle, the boil, boil, or will boil, or will abscess, so it's a collection of pus. That is walled, muhatab, epithelial wall, okay, firm or fluctuant, painful, tender, red mass, originating from a single infected hair follicle. Single infected hair follicle. Rahm jaliya baadi muhimma. Tarif al abscess. Wala anta madra. It's a, it's a cavity formed by finger-like projections or loculations of a granulation tissue and pus that extends outward along planes of least resistance. In the furuncle, I will boil, I will abscess. I will have overlap between the furuncle and the abscess. Furuncles are uncommon in children and tend to increase in frequency with age after puberty. Furunculosis, furunculosis condition occurs as a self-limited infection in which one or several lesions are present or or as a chronic recurrent disease that lasts for months or years, affecting one or several family members. يعني الحالة مال furunculosis هي a self-limiting condition بس أشني إما وحدة أو عدة furuncles appear either acutely or as a chronic recurrent condition lasting for months or years. affecting one or several family members. It's genetic. Most cases or most patients with sporadic or recurrent furunculosis appear healthy otherwise and have an intact immune system. مو تقول كرونيك يعني دائما يصير عنده احكي شوي بالعربي انا هم لاحظها شاب كل شيء ما بيه او شابه كل شيء ما بيها 
عندها قد يعني مايلد تيروكلوزيز اند سيفرال باستورز sometimes even single one uh, single furuncle or several furuncles تروح على طبيب راسا يتلى فحص مال دايبيتس والله احتمال عندك سكري يعني هاي فد ما فد شيء يعني هاي هاي مغالطه يعني 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 دايبيتس هاز نوثينج تو دو وذ ذس اوف كورس يو ار مور برون تو have these conditions if you are diabetic and um, uh, these conditions in diabetics are more difficult to be treated but this doesn't mean that you perform uh, uh, a, a, a blood a glucose test for every single person who has a few uncles because because uh, most patients are otherwise healthy and have an intact immune system طبعا المشكله شنو المشكله مو بالفحص المشكله المريض راح يعني او الشخص ما سمي مريض راح راح يهبط راح يخاف راح واذا واذا هو شاب ابونا وامه راح يهبطون يعني 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 مو دايبيتس يعني از ان انكيورابل كونديشن يعني وبي مضاعفات ويستمر طول العمر فمو يعني You can't do this, yeah. Please never do this. Okay. Okay. The predilection sites are areas prone to friction or mind trauma. Okay. Such as the anterior thighs, buttocks, axillary, groin, waist. Okay. Taban, meningeal microbiology, muscle muscle staphylococcus is the most common pathogen. But aerobic and anaerobic bacteria may 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 cause furunculosis <coughs> but in general in general the microbiology of the abscesses or boils reflects the microflora of the anatomic part yani bil perineal abscesses or furuncles anaerobes are more commonly Uh, are, are the cause more commonly than cephalococcus aureus. So the microbiology of the abscesses reflects the microflora of that anatomic part. Rather. So the lesion starts deep. Mumethyl staphylococcal folliculitis. With a furuncle The, the infection is deeper okay and we have a papule or a mass or a nodule firm or fluctuant <coughs> painful tender hot okay you might or might not have systemic symptoms okay pain <coughs> i'm sorry becomes more as more purulent material accumulates Okay, and again, pain is more in certain areas where the uh, the inflammatory process or the mass cannot uh, expand uh, easily, where the expansion is restricted, like the neck and the external auditory canal. In these areas, uh, the pain is more severe because there is no. Uh, area for expansion okay so the abscess or boil or furuncle either remains deep and reabsorbs gradually or ruptures into outwards into the surface okay and the point of rupture heals with scarring because the the infection is deep the inflammation is deep okay so scarring might be an issue in furunculosis قبل ذا احكي على fluctuation fluctuation هو اما firm ما قلنا الماس او النودل اما firm او fluctuant uh, so transmission of impulse sorry fluctuation means transmission of impulse in two directions okay 
it implies to fluid or gas. ما تقدر تعرف هو بس يعني يعني إذا أحد ما يعرف شنو هو fluctuation. Okay, so if you put two index fingers on opposite poles, when you press with one finger, the opposite will feel the impulse passively. Okay, this is fluctuation. Here the pulse is uh, has has become fluid. Okay, not firm. The the uh, the nodule or mass is not firm. It's fluctuant. The carbuncle originates from more than one infected hair follicle. The furuncle, single infected hair follicle. The carbuncle he aggregates several infected hair follicles. Okay, again, it origi originates deep in the dermis, actually more deeper than the furuncle, okay. forming a large, broad deeper swelling or mass again hot painful tender okay firm at the beginning then becomes fluctuant okay and eventually it will point through the surface and drain through multiple openings or orifices of course you will have systemic upset increased white bc Okay, and you might end up with extensive scarring because the inflammation is is more than a furuncle. Several hair follicles are affected. Um, the infection is more deep. The inflammation is more severe. Okay, so of course, uh, scarring is more than a furuncle. Again, any area could be affected. But the preferred sites for a carbuncle formation are areas of thick dermis, like the back of the neck, okay, and the back or back of the trunk, and lateral aspects of the thighs. Areas with thick dermis. Of course, in the pre-antibiotic era or time, there were some fatalities. Again, there are complications. There is an infection. Infection might spread to other. There is a deep infection, especially. It might spread to the underlying bone, for example, causing osteomyelitis. To the underlying joint, arthritis. Okay. So, in the pre-antibiotic era, there were some fatalities. Mortality rate as a mark of antibiotics. This is the furuncle, okay. Uh, a nodule or uh, a mass that is red in color, hot, painful, tender, surrounded by erythema uh, that has, you know, uh, one opening uh, into the surface, okay, draining pulse. Again, a furuncle. With a single large opening, draining pulse, nodule or a mass, surrounded by erythema, painful, hot, tender, furuncle, or boil, even sometimes called abscess. This is the gluteal region of a person, a big mass, very red, surrounded by a halo of erythema, okay, with, with, an opening pointing to the outside. This this mass is ready to rupture. Okay, uh, with lots of of necrotic and parent material uh, coming out. Again, firm, hot, tender mass. Again, furuncle. This is a carbuncle. Bigger and deeper than a furuncle, okay, extending more deeply into the uh, dermis and uh, subcutaneous tissue, okay, with 
more systemic symptoms, more pain, more tenderness. And with multiple openings, you can see the multiple openings that are about to rupture. Okay, because it originates from several hair, hair follicles, not like a furuncle, from a single infected hair follicle. So we have multiple openings in a carbuncle. Most commonly on areas of thick dermis, like the back, back of the neck, and lateral aspects of the thighs. Carbuncle. Treatment, of course. Topical plus systemic antibiotics for five, ten days or two weeks. Okay. But but many furuncles are self-limited. Okay, sometimes we don't need antibiotic treatment. Of course, if if the furuncle or carbon, if the furuncle or carbuncle does not point and rupture to the outside, incision and the drainage is the primary treatment. If the furuncle or carbuncle doesn't rupture or point uh, to the outside, you should release the pre the pressure. Okay, um, the pain will stay, tenderness will stay, the systemic upset will stay and may increase. You should relieve the pressure and relieve uh, the patient. So incision and drainage is the primary treatment. Okay. Again, along with topical and systemic antibiotics. Uh,